this this lecture continues the discussion about external evaluation of the external environment for strategic purposes, situational awareness in the external environment. This, uh, this particular lecture, we'll talk about a, a conceptual approach called strategic group mapping or strategic group maps. The idea here is to understand how, how other companies, how the competition in an industry um, looks vis-a-vis -vis various kinds of approaches. Uh, you want to try to understand what competitive characteristics dif differentiate firms. Figure out on a plot with two variables that are, it's a conceptual plot, not really an analytical one, but one that kind of positions uh, businesses in an industry uh, along various dimensions, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, look at ones that act similarly and see how they're competing with one another's. Uh, with one another, and then you can draw some perspectives and some conclusions about what's likely to happen and how organizations are, will, are likely to respond to changes in the environment and to competitive moves by other players. So what you're trying to do is uh, create a map that has two dimensions, an x and an x-axis and a y-axis, and then uh, think about uh, frameworks for those dimensions. For example, you might talk about price and quality range, whether it's high or low, you know, your price for quality or whatever. You might look at geographic coverage, where they locate it. Because you may have firms that compete in a very similar way with a very low price, but they're regionally located. One is in the northeast, another is in the south. They may not compete with each other at all because of geographic distinctions. You might look at product line breadth. Are they one particular product, or do they have a broad product base? Uh, degrees of service offered, that is like, just a, st a standard no frills hamburger or something where you can get a plate and various kinds of vegetables and toppings and all sorts of things um, if it's a burger joint. Um, you might look at the degree to which they're integrated as a vertical integration. They own their suppliers, they own their distribution channels uh, versus their fitting in a particular niche within the supply chain. And we'll talk more about some of these concepts in uh, the next module. Well, you may look at how diversified the firms are. Diversified firms will act differently, perhaps, than firms that are so solely positioned in one, in one marketplace. So let's look at an example of, um, of what might, how one might think about uh, building a, a, a group map, a strategic group map. The, essentially, you look at the map axes and you pick some. You want to make sure there are things that don't necessarily go together. Like if you said something like um, high growth and high profit growth, well, revenue growth and profit growth tend to go together because if you sell more, you make more money, but the unit might not be. So it might be revenue growth and profit per unit might be you know, gross margin per unit. Those don't necessarily correlate, but growth of the two other ones do. So you want to find things that don't correlate with one another. You want them to think about um, they each represent in some ways how one approaches the customer. The example before, we were saying where some they have a store or product that's located in the south, one in the northeast, one in the west, one in the mountain states, you have some in Mexico, Canada. They, um, they approach the, the, the customers via geographically, right? Even though they're selling a very similar product, um, they approach geographically, so that would be one, uh, one way to think about how they uh, how they, are, uh, they have these different approaches. So you might do geographic locations and things like that. Find ones that do compete with one another because they're both in the Northeast, for example. Um, and you also want them in some way to be quantitative. You can say better or worse. They don't have to be numbers, so to speak, but you can say A is bigger than B or A is more broadly distributed than B, that sort of thing. So you want something that you can make a strong case that you can quantify these um, particular competitors in an industry along these various dimensions. So let's take a look. Here's an example of uh, retail chains. You can see along the bottom we have a geographic dispersion, how broadly distributed they are, and then we have on the, the other side we have their profitability, and, um, or excuse me, their price quality uh, metric. And you can see that there's different companies go after different kinds of approaches. 
Um, there's uh, in the this was a broad geography, low price quality, Kmart, Walmart. You can see there's this huge the size of the bubble is their revenue. You can see there's a there's a, a very strong rivalry there among those players, but they don't really necessarily compete with uh, Gucci or somebody who has a very high price quality and is much more uh, geographically uh, uh, focused in terms of where it actually locates its stores. Um, you know, based upon this sort of analysis, you, you can see that certain players, even though nominally they're in the same industry, they don't really compete along these various um, levels. Now, important to note, all of these conceptual tools are only ways to frame the data so you can do analysis about what it means from a strategy perspective for a particular player in that market, like you want to do a Walmart strategy or, or a Gucci strategy or, or something like that. Right? Which strategy groups are located where, which have the most favorable market positions, which ones seem to have staked out something that no one else can compete well with them, um, which are likely to have more competition internally as one moves into a higher price category. They're tending to go and maybe compete with some additional players they hadn't competed with in the past. And which groups are also threatened by if someone makes a move downward. For example, you might have a really strong player and they decide to go in and lower their prices and they bring a certain type of, of customer with them and become a really strong player if they move into another area on the strategic map. So these are the kind of questions you start posing generally in a group discussion to find out how the dynamics of the marketplace, the competition in the marketplace, this rivalry in the five forces model of Porter, how that's likely to develop. Who are really the players that you're competing with as you start to understand what's happening in the external environment. The last lecture in this group will be about key success factors. Once you've thought about the external environment, all the factors we described, you've looked at the five forces model of Porter, you've thought about the strategic group that you're involved with and who some other players are, so who you actually are competing with. And by the way, you've identified those dimensions in which you're competing. From there, you can go and start talking about what are some of the factors that will lead to our business's strategic success within this external environment. And that's what we'll talk about next. We'll see you at that lecture.